Oh, my leg swelled really, really bad, and there was kind of a stance. Um, so the doctor went ahead, and he told me, I'm going to give you a few hours, and you need to get up, walk around, do something. And the whole time I was in the hospital overnight, I was walking around the hallways and everything. And it was just something. I mean, I could not get comfortable when I was sleeping just because of the fact that my water had broke, and I was soaked 24-7 the whole time I was laying there. Every time I walked to the bathroom, I was dripping. And it was just something my boyfriend nicknamed me puddles because i was dripping everywhere even though he slept through the whole thing he was very very sleepy I actually took some pictures of him and i sent them to my dad on facebook and i posted so everybody could see because it was funny and everybody was like oh is that him under that blankie because he was using my blankie but um but anyhow so the doctor came in one more time and said, well, this and this, and I'm going to give you, like, two hours, or if you haven't, you know, done anything since noon, then we're going to go for a C-section. So, before he left the room, he checked me again, and he said that I was roughly, he said his fingers were a little bit bigger than the females, but they said I was roughly, like, three and a half to four centimeters dilated, so he was just like, oh, I'll check you, but to him, it was like I was only two centimeters, because, like I said, he said that because he had bigger fingers and whatnot. So, we did that. He wasn't really happy because I was only 80% effaced at the time. But he said, maybe this will go a little quicker. So, I asked for the birthing ball. I walked the hallways. Actually, I didn't even walk the hallways. I skipped the hallways, thinking it would help me go into labor quicker. But I didn't know this until after my pregnancy. But I guess the longer your body is in labor... It kind of gives up and your cervix do begin to close if you don't have your child soon enough. And I wish I would have kind of known that beforehand because it would have been a little helpful. But the whole entire time I was on the birth ball, she was trying to come out. She was trying to pull herself out of there. I mean, she had gotten ready to be in the birth canal right afterwards. And at noon, he came in and checked me one more time. He said, I'll give you two hours. Because I was only, I think he said at the time, I was about... 40% effaced at that point. I was 3 centimeters, 40 effaced. Or maybe it was 70 effaced, actually. One of the two. Well, I came in at 2 o'clock, and it's I, I had fallen asleep. I got my rest before that, and it was like my body knew. Five, ten minutes beforehand, they were talking about my boyfriend, my mother-in-law, my father-in-law were in there. They were talking about everything, and I heard it, and it kind of hurt my feelings that I had to go for a cesarean if I wasn't anything more this time. And at the time, I'm still on all these fluids. Like, I'm still on the Pitocin and everything, hoping to God that this is going to happen today. And so nothing's happening. So I went ahead and I was doing everything the right way. He came in, he checked me. I was three centimeters, 20% effaced. My cervix were indeed closing. My body was starting to give up because nothing was happening. So he said, we're going to prepare you for a cesarean. I cried. Everybody, I think, cries at that point in time when you think you could vaginally give birth, but you can't. Also, I found out, too, right before that my pelvis is very narrow, so I would have never been able to give birth vaginally. Um, it also, when they were checking me, my cervix, it hurt, like, worse than anything in the whole wide world, like, worse than a pap smear, which was weir really weird to them, which means that she possibly wouldn't have been able to fit either way but they came in they got me ready um the one lady came in because when you're pregnant sometimes you get too big to the point where you cannot see anymore so to you ladies who shave constantly like I did say goodbye to that when you get to a certain point far like length because I did not shave for the last like two months three months maybe not even my legs it was that bad but the day that I went into work the day of my baby shower I did get a chance to shave my legs well from the top of my knee down to my ankle which was weird because it's like she wanted the doctors to give birth then I just didn't get a chance to shave my bikini line so they didn't have to worry about hairy legs during that process but normally I tell them oh I'll be prepared I haven't shaved my legs in this amount of time I always tell doctors that for some reason but I think it's because I'm embarrassed I haven't shaved my legs we shouldn't be embarrassed ladies it's a thing it happens we get busy and carried away with other stuff but the lady came in and she shaved my bikini line area. All of it, even the little bit of belly hair I did have if I had any. She explained to me I was going to go in the room. She explained everything. But it, with the way she explained it was not how it happened at all. 
um, how it happened actually, when they came in, they gave me my cap and I was shaking because I was so scared and I was crying and it was just not fun. I wasn't crying a lot when they came in. I just cried when they told me I had to have one done. And then when they walked out, I became a man and I sucked it up a little bit, even though I had tears in, the, in my eyes. A few of them asked me questions just to get, keep me calm, whatnot. I put my cap on. I put some nice warm socks on they helped me with. And I walked and I joked about it because I was so scared. Oh, we're going to need a bot behind me because I'm just dribbling everywhere. And the nurses didn't think it was funny, which made me a little bit more embarrassed and scared. So they held my back closed as I walked to the operating room. Walking into the operating room, it's a small white room. And I think it looks white because it's so intimidating. There was a bed. Um, I do believe it was a bluish bed. There was a metal tray on the side, on my left-hand side. They brought me around the left-hand side before they did my spinal tap. And I was scared more than ever. There was really, really bright lights, which were going to be what they used for me on the bed. I was terrified. It was not fun at all. Um, I sat up on the side of the bed. I told her I was freezing, and I didn't want to move for the spinal tap, so I asked them to give me a warm blanket. They put one around my neck, they put one on the front of me, and they put one on my legs. Well, during the spinal tap, they made me kind of sit on the edge of the bed. My legs were draping down. And you kind of sit like this, and you put your arms underneath. And I had my head down like this. She told you, or he, or whoever's in there with you, most likely a female, a nurse kind of thing. Um, not to move, it's going to be okay. Well, her chest was kind of right there, she made me lean my head on her chest. Because I thought I was going to pass out because I started getting way too warm. She took it off of my neck, and I was fine. I was still a little chilly. I didn't see anything behind me. They never once allowed me to see what the spinal tap was or anything. But they asked me, do you have any pain? Because it hurt. I mean, it was like, ooh, ow, like kind of thing. Like I was saying, ow, ooh, because it's weird getting a spinal tap done. They asked me where there was most pain. They said, on my right side. Now, nobody really knows this, but the doc is always, almost always going to operate on your right side. Then the midwife's on the left side, most likely. At least that's how it is around here, and that's what everybody always says. Which, I didn't put two and two together, but a couple weeks after my cesarean, I was like, why does my right side hurt so much? And they're like, oh, it's because the side of the doc was on. And I was like, oh, that's why they wanted me to feel more of the pain in my right side too, right? Oh, kind of thing. Like, But that happened. The, instantly, as soon as the spinal tap went in, I could not feel my lower half of my body like from my boobs probably down I didn't really want to talk like that's how fast it kicked in they might have given me a little bit more morphine than my body could handle because I mean I was 90 pounds starting out and I gained about 40 pounds I was 135 ish when I went into labor it was weird having that extra body weight but we did it. it was cool so I felt it right away she helped me lay back. She lifted my legs for me on the bed, and I laid down. So you have these arm things that come out of your your bed. She has you. You can either put your arms straight down, or you can lay them on the sides out like this. I chose to lay my arms on the sides, and then they didn't strap them or anything. They just kind of, I felt them move my arms. I just didn't want to move my arms. I was kind of scared, I think. They then got me ready. They put a catheter in so that you can pee, obviously, so you're not peeing all over the table. They put some iodine too. They put a big tarp, which some people, I just met a woman that I work with who the third pregnancy, she did not ask for the tarp. She wanted to see the whole cesarean with her child be 